Have you ever accomplished something you weren't quite sure you could do? It's energizing. It's exciting. It's amazing. Success. It feels kind of wonderful, right? The work you did opened more doors than you ever thought possible. And yet, that work also teased the opportunity of even more doors that you never thought possible. And maybe, just maybe, as you peeked through the doors at what could be, you thought to yourself, I think I want more. <gasps> Instead of success handing you happiness, it gave you a faster pace, an increased hunger, bigger goals. And in that faster pace, increased hunger and bigger goals, you also found uncertainty, self-doubt, anxiety, stress. Success is wonderful, but it's also kind of hell. It just might be that success is kind of wonder hell. <laughs> Over the course of a 20-year career in executive search, I was hired by my clients to go out and find for them and recruit away on their behalf some of the most successful people in the world. Now, that sounds like kind of a hard job, except I was helped by the fact that despite all this success, which is why I was calling them, they weren't all that happy, which is why they were calling me back. Now, we think once we've achieved success, everything gets easier. So why doesn't it ever get easier? Why doesn't it feel better? Why doesn't success equal happiness? And why does it all too often feel like wonder hell? Now, I had my own wonder hell moment shortly after my last book came out. At the, I'd, I'd spent the previous few weeks existing on airplanes. <laughs> I had gone to sleep in 20 different hotel beds. I had woken up in 10 different time zones. At the moment of this realization, I was 35,000 feet in the air. I had 1,200 miles behind me and 1,200 more to go. The only thing I knew for certain was that somewhere between the blur that would be the past and the blur that would be the future was the space I was in at present. And the space I was in at present was upright and locked in a center seat on a red eye. And I was completely and utterly fried. Now, launching my book well meant I had to be bold. I had no idea what I was doing, but I set these crazy goals for myself anyway. I let my mouth write a whole lot of checks that my hustle had to cash. I'd spent those weeks existing on nothing but coffee and protein bars and the rush of adrenaline that bowel-shaking terror offers by the fistful. But it worked. This thing that I created, I grew, I birthed, I pursued so very hard for those weeks and months and years leading up to it, it worked. I was pushing towards success and my mental GPS announced, you've arrived. And I was like, I know, right? But I was also pushing towards burnout. I was tired, so very tired. And somewhere in the alchemy of achievement and exhaustion, the part of my brain that normally governs my humility disappeared. And all I was left with was a tiny little voice whispering, this thing has legs. This thing has legs. Now, you might recognize this moment as the moment that the burden of potential walks into your psyche, unpacks its backpack, and asks, hey, what you got for me, huh? The burden of your potential plunks its weight on your shoulders and demands that you carry it around with you at all times. It's your wonder hell. And it starts the moment that you realize that your idea has promise, that it can be bigger, that you were meant for more. Ego has entered the chat. <laughs> Now, what comes next is a sea of turbulent emotions. These necessary evils that we've been told are just part of going after everything we've ever wanted. And we think we need to just struggle through and get by all the time, wrestling with this never-ending, flip-flopping dialogue. I can handle this. Oh, I can't handle this. 
We think of success as a final destination, but it's not. We think once we've achieved it, we've arrived. But we haven't. We think once there, easy money, smooth sailing, but it's not because wonder hell teaches us that success is not a final destination at all, but merely an inflection point along the way. So once I realized I wasn't at the end of my journey, but merely in the middle, I set about to do some homework. I read all the books. I read the books telling me to crush it and to lean in and to 10X. <laughs> and I read their polar opposites, the ones telling me to stop apologizing and wash my face. And what was on offer on social media was not much better. There were the slick back bros, the hustle-born dudes jetting off to ink their next deal, yeah. And then there were the boho chic influencers telling me to follow my passion, <laughs> telling me I could find happiness if only I just breathed into the right energy crystals. I mean, what even is an energy crystal anyway? <sighs> neither of these worked for me, and I'm guessing neither of these work for you either. They didn't work for the thousands of leaders who I stewarded through massive moments of career and life shift during those 20 years in executive search. And they certainly didn't work for the nearly 100 glass ceiling shatterers, Olympic medalists, startup unicorns, and everyday people like me and like you, who I sought out to interview to find a way out of wonder hell. Each one of them told me how they did things they never thought possible. And each one of them also told me that at every phase and at every stage, they experienced crushing imposter syndrome, doubt, vulnerability, uncertainty, envy, exhaustion, and burnout. But each one of them made it to the other side and the better for it. So, how'd they do it? Three ways. First, they came to terms with their ambition. Do you know why internal candidates always leave if they don't get the job? It's because the very process of interviewing for that bigger job means that they literally had to, even just for a moment, answer questions in that role, speak in the voice of that role, wear the clothes of that role. And once they saw part of themselves in this new way, they couldn't unsee themselves in this new way. And just like these internal candidates, you can't unsee this new you either. Each time we envision success, even before we achieve it, we see a version of ourselves that we never thought real, a potential we never thought possible, a promise of everything we can be and all that we can embody. There is the you before this realization, and then there is the you after. Second, the mixed emotions surrounding this realization, the good, the bad, and the ugly, they aren't limitations, but invitations. For each of the people I spoke to who had a track record of thriving in wonder hell, they understood that these uncomfortable feelings weren't just part of the process. They were actually incredibly helpful allies. So they were able to stop, reflect on these emotions, listen to these emotions, renegotiate their relationship with these emotions. Because we think about these chaotic reactions as slings and arrows to be absorbed and silenced and pushed down and muscled through, but that's a lie. And that lie is stopping us from capitalizing on our wonder hell. Because wonder hell is the excitement and the fear. It's the joy and the uncertainty. It's the possibility and the chaos. And it is the promise and the potential that you feel when you see this new you and you realize the only one who gets to choose which you you become is, well, you. And that means changing the voice inside your head, warning, you haven't done this before, and warning you to run away from your potential into a cheerleader, yelling, you haven't done this before, and encouraging you to run towards it, wonder hell is the sign that you are on the right track to new opportunity and new growth. And third, wonder hell loves itself a repeat visitor. We think that things will settle down after. It'll get easier when. All we need to do is just get through this one stomach churning, putt clenching, fight or flight moment as if it is a single, one time, temporary hurdle. But for everyone I spoke to, What was on the other side of this wonder hell was the next one, and the next one, and if they were lucky, 
the next one after that. Our journeys are a series of successes, punctuated by lessons and losses and life. It's an ongoing cycle. There isn't one big finish line. There are a million different little ones. So listen, I'm not telling you to suck it up, and I'm not telling you to get hard. What I am telling you is that to define success as a finite destination would mean that you're accepting that there's only a finite limit to your growth. And all that does is steal away all the wonder and leave us only in the hell. So, what if we redefine success not as an endpoint, but as a waypoint, and allowed ourselves to sit in that deep, deep, deep discomfort that is the only path to growth? What if we saw success not as a final destination, but as a portal? one that expanded our understanding of what is possible? What if we stopped dreading wonder hell and bracing to survive it, and instead learned to look forward to it, to plan for it, to learn from it, to grow from it, and thrive in it instead? What if wonder hell wasn't our breakdown, but our breakthrough? Because wonder hell invites us to dive into that discomfort. Wonder Hell compels us to expand our boundaries. Wonder Hell urges us to embrace our newfound potential. So what will you do with the gift that is the burden of your potential? What will you do next time you find yourself in Wonder Hell? Thank you.